welcome to Stogie 411. It's been a while, seems like forever I've been gone, but I'm back, happy to be back, looking forward to it, glad to see everybody in the chat room, and good to be back with my buddy Mike. How's it going, pal? Uh, it's going good, my friend. Uh, I'm just checking here. I, I See, I screwed up already. Look at this. You got me all flustered coming back this week. <laughs> and I forgot to fix the audio for the intro. Nobody heard the, the audio for it except for me. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Matt can fix that when we do the video. So, uh, But anyways, it's good to be back. Uh, as everybody can see, Today, if you know the gentleman, if you don't, but we're going to make sure you know him by the end of this hour, we have Hank from Olivero Cigars. How's it going, Hank? Uh, it's beautiful. Everything is good today. It's a beautiful day down here in South Florida. Just hanging out, smoking a cigar. Yes, yes. A well, cigar that we'll all be talking about soon. Hank's going to give us a little insight so you guys could see, hopefully you could see that. We're smoking the uh, new aging room. And uh, Mikey's smoking it as well, and Hank's going to give us a little insight on that. So uh, why don't we get the show rolling, Hank, and uh, why don't you tell everybody a little bit uh, about yourself, about Oliveros, and uh, how you got started in the business? Uh, well, actually, we, uh, we started, my partner Rafael Nodal and I started in the industry back in 1999. We opened up a small little internet retail site uh, called Avila Cigars, uh, which we subsequently we sold. Um, but through that uh, little retail website, we got to know all the manufacturers down here in South Florida, uh, Nick Perdomo, Puros Indios, uh, and among them, of course, Oliveros. Um, we were running that site for probably a year, year and a half, and we got to the point where we sold so much Oliveros. Why? I don't know, because at the time they had almost exclusively uh, flavored cigars. Um, but they, they saw what we were doing and they asked us to come in and consult for sales and marketing. So we agreed and we, we did that and we made a couple of changes immediately. Uh, one of the things we did is um, their sales force consisted entirely of uh, two guys on telephones. Uh, they had no reps, uh, independent reps or brokers visiting the stores, so we brought in a full complement of independent representatives to visit the stores. The other thing we did was we, uh, we contacted Nick Perdomo. Uh, to make a non-flavored cigar for Oliveros, and we brought that out um, probably mid-2001. Uh, it was the Oliveros Grand Reserve, came out in a, in a really nice African Cameroon uh, wrapper, a nice Nicaraguan blend, delicious cigar, and also came out in a uh, in Nicaraguan Maduro. Um, that cigar sold pretty well, uh, the Cameroon better than the Maduro. Um, Come around the end of 2001, um, the, the owner of that uh, enterprise, the Oliveros line, got really sick, wound up in a, in a nursing home and, and passed away. So the company was really just kind of sitting there. And uh, we had an opportunity to, to purchase it, and we did so and changed the registrations and all that stuff. And we opened our doors in February of 2002. So since that time, we've con continued to uh, develop and and market the flavored brands, which was primarily what Oliveros was known for. And uh, But our real focus has been on the premium, non-flavored side. And uh, we've gone through a whole bunch of different lines. Some of them were better than others. Uh, some were mistakes. Um, and we've kind of learned from our mistakes and uh, kind of brings us to where we are today. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> Do, uh, let's see. Uh... Well, you basically told us about Olive Barrels and how you got started. Yeah. How about the uh, who? Why don't you, why don't you why don't we get right into what we're smoking, Hank? The aging room. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this guy? Well, a little bit of history first. Actually, about a year and a half ago, we came out with a line called Swag, and uh, has done very well for us. That, very nice hat. Very nice okay. hat. Um, that line um, is an old Dominican speaking about the swag now. Uh, old Dominican wrapper, filler, binder, and it actually it all comes from one farm in the Dominican Republic. Um, the name of the farm is La Canela, and actually that farm is co-owned by uh, Hochi Blanco, Jose Blanco, uh, from Tabacalera Palma, and Lito Gomez from La Flor Dominicana. They co-own that farm. So on Hochi's side, he gets 50% of the tobacco, the yield of the, of the crop every year. 
And he's been sitting on all this great tobacco. Um, he does a lot of work for uh, Thompson, Cigars International, Famous, all the big uh, online retailers, catalog sales. But he makes typically for them inexpensive bundled cigars. So he's really been sitting on this premium stuff coming out of La Canela for years. So we've done some business with Ho Chi in the past, and uh, he was nice enough to offer us some of this fantastic tobacco when we started talking about the swag line. We kind of went through different blends and different combinations with the wrappers and the binders. We, we settled on two blends that we were going to come out for swag. Um, one was a, just an absolute home run. Uh, the second one was fantastic, just a little bit off of what that, that number one blend was. When we ran the production numbers on that first blend, the number one blend, um, there wasn't enough tobacco for that blend to, to meet what we thought the demand would be, what our projected sales would be. So we took that number one blend, we put it on the shelf. We chose the number two blend, came out with swag. Now the swag line's available in six different sizes. Uh, we just released this year uh, a Limitado, very limited blend. Extra age on the wrapper, just a fantastic smoke. But the swag, using that number two blend, has gotten 90 and 91 ratings in Cigar Aficionado. Sales have been fantastic. It's a dynamite smoke. Um, it's made in everything from a little Corona all the way up to a 6 by 60 So there's a wide variety of sizes. And if, if you gave that cigar to somebody and didn't tell them it was Dominican, they would never guess it was a Dominican cigar. I mean, it's got, a, it's got a strength to it. It's not an overwhelming cigar by any means, but it's a lot fuller in body than you would imagine a Dominican cigar would be. And that's kind of our tagline on that cigar is, it's not your father's Dominican cigar. Uh, just a really nice blend. And remember, that's the number two blend. So this year, when we're thinking about product development for the show, we wanted to come out with a way that we could get that number one, that home run blend out on the market because it was just so good. We would smoke it when we went to the Dominican in the factory. People would ask us what we wanted to smoke. We'd go in and we'd, we'd grab one of these number one blends. It's just fantastic. Um, so we came up with this concept of aging room. Basically what that is, it's a, it's a planned limited edition. So the aging room this, in this blend called the M356, is going to be out probably until the middle of next year. And then we'll be out of this tobacco. The aging room line will, will, uh, will live on, but it'll, be, it'll exist in, with different blends. So it's kind of a consistent line that's going to be always evolving, probably every year, if not more frequently. Yeah. Now, will the sizes... Well, speaking of the aging... Well, I was going to ask, will the sizes, will the sizes for the... For the aging room cigars be about the same every year or every time you you redo yeah it? we'll probably yeah we're probably going to release them because of the limit limited amount of tobacco you we're not going to come out with a, a whole ton of different sizes just because the, the limited availability of that tobacco right. um so you can probably figure three to four sizes on each of the new releases within the aging room line what's the uh what's the a m356 represent hank can you tell us it's uh, it's so simple. It's it's silly. I mean, this this uh, this uh, blend was uh, made on a Monday, the three hundred and fifty sixth day of the year. <laughs> All right, there we go. <laughs> so there's no fancy name. I mean, it's I mean, really, when we when we blended it, that's how it was identified, and we just we just left it like that. Yeah. One of the one of the really neat things, if you look on the band, you can see a pair of brass knuckles. Um, and we've had a lot of people oh, ask. Yeah. If, yeah, what's up with the brass knuckles? And uh, it's more prominent on the box. It's pretty small on the on the cigar band itself. Yeah. Um, but on one of the trips to the Dominican, when we went in there to to get that get that uh, those cigars to smoke, um, on the shelf in front of the cigars was a pair of brass knuckles, and we're like, <laughs> "What is this?" <laughs> and it turns out one of the rollers had gone in there, had a pair of brass knuckles, left them sitting on the shelf. And so it was like a sign. We got these brass knuckles guarding our, our product, you know. So we, we took it as a good luck charm, and we incorporated it in the graphics for the line. It's nice. kind of weird, but uh, so far it's been working. Yeah. 
I mean, I didn't even notice that until you just pointed it out, actually. Yeah, it's real small on the band. On the box, you can yeah. see it more prominently. Yeah, pretty, pretty, pretty nice. That's neat. The, the question I would have is, why did the roller have the brass knuckles there in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I didn't really want to ask. Yeah. I, I thought of that too, but there's there's no way to know. Could have been worse. He could have left the AK-47 on the shelf. Yeah, that's yeah, true. That's true. Exactly. <laughs> Brass knuckles are pretty tame. <laughs> Why don't you tell us a little bit about the uh, Sun Grown Reserve? Well, that cigar, we haven't even started to ship that yet. That came out, we had samples to give out at the uh, IPCPR out in Las Vegas back in July. Um, that's really a nice cigar that we anticipate starting to ship um, on October 7th. So they'll be available in, in stores uh, probably in, what is that, October 7th would be, what, two weeks from now? So probably yeah, in three not. weeks. Probably in about three weeks they'll start hitting the store shelves. That's an old Nicaraguan cigar with a beautiful dark Nicaraguan grown, uh, sun grown wrapper. It's medium to full. Um, it comes in four sizes. Uh, really a nice smoke. It's got a real nice flavor. Um, again, medium to full body. Um, just a delicious, delicious cigar. And it's so different from the most recent products we've released. So it's a, it's a nice compliment and contrast to the new products that have already hit the shelves. Cool. All right. Uh, what about a uh other than your cigars, what cigars are you enjoying from other manufacturers? Or do you just stick to your own? There are other manufacturers? <laughs> 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 there, might, there might be one or two. <laughs> Mike, it, Mike, it took you, it took you a second. Yeah. It did. It, I just <laughs> here and I'm like, did he say what I think he just said? <laughs> Leave that to a Yankee fan to say that. <laughs> yeah, you knew that had to come out sooner or later. I will bow down right now. <laughs> Just don't let Rob see that. He'll probably never tweet me again, kick me out, won't follow me. But uh, I'll bow hey, it's down. All, it's all good, man. Baseball is, is a, an enduring thing in my life. It sounds like it's in yours, too. Yes, it is. No, I really enjoy a lot of the stuff from uh, from Lito Gomez. Um, we talked about him a little bit ago about uh, the, the tobacco and La Canela, the form in the Dominican. Right. He's just making some outstanding cigars, um, and he has for, for a number of years. So I, I really enjoy, especially some of his stronger cigars. He, he makes a pretty stout cigar, yeah, yeah. Um, and I enjoy them. The, the thing that I, I like about his cigars, I think, is that uh, – he, he delivers a lot of, on the body and the strength of a cigar without sacrificing flavor. Um, to me, the most important thing when we go to blend a cigar, uh, strength is really secondary to me. Um, for me, the, the, it's all about the flavor. So if you have a, a mild cigar or a medium cigar or a full cigar, my first question is, how's the flavor? What's the taste? And I can, I can smoke and enjoy anything, the whole spectrum, from, from mild to full, as long as the flavor is there. I don't enjoy things that are overpowering and, and real harsh and you get that little scratch in the back of your throat. It's, that's not for me. I don't, I don't even want to bother um, without naming any names. Um, but I think Lito has it down pat. I mean, he's got a great cigar. Uh, Ernesto Perez Carillo, the EP Carillo line, fantastic cigars. Um, yes, yeah, so I, I think that's one of the best recently. Connecticut's out nowadays yeah. is his new wave. Yeah. I, I think for the... It's hard to make a milder cigar with that much flavor, and he does. I thought he did a real good job mm -hmm. with that. An, an excellent job. And apart from making great cigars, he's just a fantastic guy, a yes. really a nice guy. Um, other than that, I mean, those those would be the two that I, I would highlight. I think Nick Perdomo has got a, a lot of nice product out. I mean, I'm not trying to do commercials for these guys, but... Uh, <laughs> You know, they are, they are competitors, but they are friends as well. Right. Um, I think the my personal taste, the best cigar that Nick makes is the Champagne. I love that cigar. That's a, just a fantastic cigar. All his other stuff is good, too. Mm -hmm. But for me, my personal taste, the Champagne is it. Yeah. I like the Patriarch. But I, I like a more fuller body, too. That's just me. But, but the Champagne is really good. 
Hey, you know, the, the bottom line is it's a great time to be a cigar smoker yeah. because there are just so many good cigars. You walk into any humidor and there's probably not a bad stick in there. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's a few on the market that are just bad, right. um, but there's very few. They're very few and far between. Yep. They may not all meet your taste yep. or, or be your favorite to your particular palate, but they're still good cigars. Yeah. It, oh. It's really hard to go wrong. Right. Yeah, I agree with you. Everybody's palate's different. Everybody's taste mm -hmm. is different. It, it doesn't mean it's bad. It's just not for you. So. Right. Yeah, it's the whole thing. If if the cigars were that bad, they wouldn't be on the shelves anymore because the company would be out of business or the line would be discontinued. So somebody has to enjoy yeah. it if you don't. So. Oh, exactly. Exactly. They're stores. They're not museums. They're not there to collect stuff. They're there to sell. Exactly. Absolutely. They're to the turn. Well, speaking of, there's so many good cigars being produced today, Hank. What are your thoughts on the cigars, the, the cigars being produced today in Nicaragua and Dominican Republic and other places? Comparing those to what you're seeing coming out of Cuba today, if you if you had any, where would you compare the two? <laughs> well, not not admitting to breaking any laws. <laughs> you guys are trying to uh, trying to get me in trouble here. No, I I, I think. Realistically, I think if you get a, a, a good Cuban cigar, you've got a great cigar. No, There's no question about that. Um, I think the problem that they're having right now is that their economy is, is so in the toilet, worse than ours, um, is that they're Russian production and they're, they're Russian cigars to market. So you're getting a cigar, for the most part, that's not well aged. It's been rushed out and the consistency just isn't there. You can get some good ones and you can get some dogs. You can get some that draw nice. You can get some that, you know, have tree trunks, you know, sticking out, out of them. Um, so I, I think in terms of quality, uh, Dominican, Nicaragua, Honduras are on a par quality-wise, construction-wise. Consistency, Cuba doesn't even come close, you know, just because of, of the situation that they're, they're living in and they're, and they're trying to do business in. Um, they can compete on a consistency level, um, so I would take I would take a, a, a box of Dominicans or or, or Nicaraguans or Hondurans uh, over a box of legal Cubans if there was such a thing. Yeah. But I think that does uh, the, probably the next question is you know what do we think when the embargo is lifted and well, you know, everybody, everybody's got their own theories on that and uh, and. and the truth is only time will tell. Uh, my personal opinion, what I think is going to happen is you're going to see a rush um, when those Cuban cigars hit our market. Uh, guys are going to be dying. I mean, it's the forbidden fruit. Um, I think Cuban cigars today are li living on number one. Their reputation as being the greatest cigars in the world, even though because of the consistency, they're really not anymore. Um, so they're living on reputation and they're the forbidden fruit. We, human nature is if we want what somebody tells us we can't have. Right. Yeah. You know, when you were a little kid, your mom said, don't put your hand on the stove. The first thing you did, <laughs> you went put your hand on the stove. <laughs> so, so they tell us you can't have Cuban cigars, so everybody wants them. Yeah. So I think those two things really are playing a part in the demand of, and, the, and the glorification of Cuban cigars. In their day, they were fantastic. And I think they probably will be again. Right. Um, once they lift the economic constraints that have, have really uh, hindered their production and, and marketability. But I think after that initial rush, I think a lot of consumers are going to realize, well, the two things are going to happen. The consumer is going to realize that I can get at a much more reasonable price point because the Cuban cigars, when they first come out, are going to be expensive as hell. Mm -hmm. um, for, for their dollar, they can get a better quality, more consistent cigar out of Dominican Republic, Nicaragua, Honduras, and they're going to come back to those products. The second part of that um, answer to that question is that Cuba is going to start opening up their market. They're going to sell tobacco. So you're going to have manufacturers in all the, the cigar producing countries buying and using Cuban tobacco. The, the big difference is they're going to sit on that tobacco for a couple of years. So it may take a couple of years for that stuff to come out to market, but they're going to be dynamite when they hit the shelves. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I was going to bring up. I was going to say the, the first concern I have with opening up the embargo is the fact, all right, all the, the cigars are going to flood America. But like you said, I mean, the consistency and everything else hasn't been there. 
and now all of a sudden they're going to come to the biggest cigar market in the world and mm -hmm. all these products are going to try rush in and it's going to make demand all across the world i think because they aren't going to have enough cigars to fill the the orders and the other part exactly. you you mentioned it i was going to say about you know with the with the tobacco itself from cuba you know one if they start selling, you know, the bundles of the tobacco and the major manufacturers, you know, like you said, Nicaragua, Honduras, Dominican Republic, pick this up. Mm -hmm. I think incorporating that even in the blends that they have now or being able to release mm -hmm. blends that you release overseas that you can't release here in the United States, you know, that has some Cuban tobacco in it. I think that's going to just make a phenomenal cigar. Oh, it's going to be incredible. Yeah. It's going to be incredible. So you're probably looking at it in my, in my fear, and, and I'm just – this is just my own head, so you know it might be really crazy. <laughs> um, if the Cuban government, once the embargo is lifted, and they sell just a ton of Cuban cigars in our market, in the U.S. market, they may see a nice payday and say, well, you know what, let's not sell the leaf, as much leaf as we were proposing to do. Let's produce, produce, produce. Right. And the, the trap that they'll fall into is trying to, to meet that demand, that initial demand, which I think is going to fall off. Yeah. So they're going to be sitting on a bunch of cigars that demand has fallen off. The demand will still be there. The demand will always be there. Right. Um, but I, I think after the initial rush, it'll fall off, and they're going to be sitting on all these all these cigars. Yeah. And then well, and, you not know, as much beef to sell. Well, you said it yourself. You know, they're they're rushing product out now. You know, to get it in the hands of people who want it. And I just can't see how they can rush it anymore. I mean, you know, guys now are bu are buying uh, boxes of cigars, of course, in a country that's it's legal to do so, <laughs> you know, of Cubans, right. and letting them sit for two, three years just because of the fact they're just not ready, you know, before they smoke right. them. And, right, because they know. Yeah. So it's like all these people are going to rush out and buy these Cuban cigars thinking that they're going to be ready to smoke that day, you know, just like all the other cigars they've smoked, and they're going to be in for a really, really big shock. Yeah. No, I, I I agree. I agree with you. It's funny, uh, Hank. You were talking about the soils and stuff, and I was watching recently. I watched uh, Nick. We're back on Nick Pernoma again, so it must be free advertisement for Nick Pernoma Day. But anyways, no, he's paid me. He's yeah, he did. Okay. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but anyway, that or I'll have to send him an invoice. Yeah, there you go. go. There we go. There we go. Um, no, Nick's a good guy. He is. I, I had a pleasure of meeting him. And uh, I watched his video uh, of his tour of his uh, fields and everything. And he was saying in one of the interviews how rich, that people don't realize how rich right now the soils are in, in Dominican Republic, in Nicaragua. And it's so rich. And, I, and he said that that's why you're really seeing some great, great tobacco coming out of these, these fields now. And, and that's why I think that the, the, the tobacco coming out of there is as good, if not better right now, compared to the Cubans. You know, that's my two cents on the whole ordeal. Well, yeah, no, I agree. And it, it really goes back to the economy. I mean, if you look historically, the amount of imports of Dominican cigars into the United States, um, the Dominican growers and factories have really benefited financially from our market. Sure. Um, they're, they're the number one uh, imported cigar into our country is the Dominican. And that's still true today, lesser so because Dominican and Honduras, Nicaraguan more so, has, has made gains in their percentage of the market share. Um, but Dominican's still number one far and away. Mm -hmm. So they have the money, they have the capital, they have the, the cash flow to be able to age tobacco properly, to maintain the fields properly. Um, and, and the result is, is what you see. I mean, it's not too many years ago. We, we kind of joked about the swag. The tagline is not your father's Dominican cigar. Mm -hmm. but, but that's very true. I mean, they've been able to care for the land uh, the way it needs to be to, to do the, the fertilization, um, uh, coming up with different hybrid seeds, um, growing the tobacco in a different way so that the Dominican tobacco now, you can get a Dominican Lajero that's a lot stronger than uh, Dominican Lajero five years ago. Um, it's still not Nicaraguan Lejero, um, right. but it's a lot stronger than it was. So I, I think based on their success, they've been smart enough to kind of innovate and, and, and modify their growing methods and, and using new seeds and coming up with new blends. So, you know, I, I think that's all to, to their advantage because they're selling and they're making money. Um, it's to the manufacturer's uh, advantage because you've got more 
and more varied tobaccos to, to work with, to blend. Um, and it works for the retail store because he's got some dynamite cigars to sell. And the end, the end winner is, is the retail consumer who's just got a ton of fantastic cigars from all these different countries. Some are puros, uh, some are, are not. There are nice blends, mm -hmm. but, but they're dynamite. Yeah. They're dynamite. Yeah. yeah. It's just like you said earlier, it, it's, it's a great time to be a cigar smoker. There, oh. It really is. There's so many amazing blends out there for everybody's palate. Right. It, it really is. It's a great time. I agree with you on that. And there's a lot of good cost-effective smokes, too. I mean, there's there's lower-cost smokes out there that just that can almost blow you away nowadays. You know, you don't have to spend oh, the $10, $12, $15 on a cigar. It, it's, it's amazing. Right. right. Now, you can, it, it doesn't take that much money to where you need to charge fifteen twenty dollars for a cigar um, to come out with a really nice smoke something that just about anyone can enjoy again they may not be to your taste right but it's still a good cigar yeah um, we've got the aging room that's going to retail out probably um, I think seven and a quarter up to that uh, eight and a half dollars on that six and a half by sixty monster right. um, the I think the the swag retails out Tops about seven and a quarter on a six by sixty, so you know the the, the smaller ring gauges are, are pretty pretty good values. Mm -hmm. We came out with um, a cigar at the trade show called the Puro Dominicano uh, Habano, uh, which is all Dominican tobacco, has a uh, Dominican grown Habano wrapper, and that cigar retails from five and a quarter to to five sixty five on the torpedo. Um, a real nice price point, yes. and that's a box cigar. It's not a bundled cigar. It's all long filler. We don't make anything that's not long filler, whether whether it's in our premiums or our flavors, um, nothing. It's all long filler, and it's all good long filler. Um, nice. We just now this past week got line extensions on that. That that cigar came out at the trade show back in July. Um, this past week we came out with two line extensions that we had been working on. We've got a Connecticut in that line. And we have a uh, of a natural, which is actually an Indonesian wrapper. Um, price points are real friendly. Uh, <laughs> you're talking about f between four and six dollars. They max out. Uh, Twenty count boxes, long filler, just a real nice smoke at a real nice price point. So we're we're looking. We've been moving that that Habana one that came out in July. Um, and like I said, the other two wrappers just came in, so they're going to be shipping out. I've got them in stock. Um, so you, all you guys out there, if your store doesn't have it, start asking. <laughs> there you go. Hey, I'm advertising for Nick. I got to advertise yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fact. You've got to you got to get some ad in there. No. Let's take a question. Matt, Matt has a question. You want to ask it, Mike? Oh no, go, I, 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 I want you to, right. to I want you to uh, pull that other cigar out then and and. All right. Let me ask Matt's question, then we'll we'll get to that other cigar. Yeah. Matt wants to know: Do you have a favorite? Olivero cigar, whether it's Olivero swag, what, whatever. Do you have a favorite? For probably the, well, since the show, since we got the aging room in, I've been going back and forth on, on the swag Corona. Um, that smaller ring gauge in that line is just unbelievable. The bigger ring gauges in the swag, they're dynamite cigars. But in the, in the Corona and in the Lancero, which there's not a whole lot of Lanceros out on the market. The flavor jumps out of that cigar. They're not the strongest cigars. It's not overpowering. I put it as medium to full, going by my palate. Um, but the flavor is just phenomenal. The Corona and the Lancero and the Swag. But I'm going back and forth between that and the small ring gauges on the on the aging room. And so if you ask me for a favorite today, it's the aging room. Okay, there you go. Tomorrow. Man. Tomorrow, if we did this tomorrow, it might be the swag corral. <laughs> well, today we're going to go with the aging room. <laughs> All right. Well, Mikey wants me to bring up a cigar idea. This cigar, I I'm pretty sure, and you can go into it with it first, Nate. I, I believe, uh, Hank, I said Nate. I believe it's a Thompson exclusive, but it's a mm -hmm. cigar that I found. I'm a bigger ring gauge guy, and I'm always looking for a good flavor cigar because, as you know, all cigars that have good flavors don't have to be expensive. They could be inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I found this cigar, and now it's almost impossible to find. So I'm going to try to get it up. I can't see my video. Can you see it good there? Yep, yep we can see it's, it. It's, 
It's the Oliveros White Label. Why don't you tell us a little bit about it, Hank? And uh, we'll, I'll well, talk a little bit about it, too. Well, you're absolutely right that that was an exclusive for Thompson Cigars. Uh, that cigar was produced for them. Um, as far as I know, they don't have any other distribution channels that they put that cigar out in. It was just in their catalog and online. Um, that cigar was made probably... I don't know when you bought it, Mike, maybe oh, two, three years ago. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Um, and I, I'm not sure why. I, I guess there's not enough guys like you uh, that didn't sell enough. Uh, they haven't put another order in. But, uh, um, you know, certainly the production capability is there for that cigar. That's mostly Dominican tobacco. I'd say the filler blend is about 85% uh, Dominican cigar, actually, um, and about 15% Nicaraguan. Um, that cigar, I think had a Brazilian Maduro wrapper on it. Yes, it did. Um, and I, I put it in probably the medium, medium to full. I don't think it was that strong a cigar, but but the flavor, as I recall, it's been a while since I smoked that cigar. Um, the flavor really did come out of that cigar well. Yeah, the flavor, I, I'll tell you, it was very inexpensive. And if I remember right, uh, less than three bucks, I mm -hmm. believe it was, it was dirt cheap. Um, I always bought, they came in a bundle. I always bought the bundle because I'll tell you, it's packed with flavor for an inexpensive cigar. It was packed with tons of great flavors. And I sent it to Mikey and the same thing. I sit on them now. I only got, I got five left and they're easily two, three years old. And I just enjoy it. It gets better. I have one every year and it gets better and better and better. And I'll tell you, I don't know why they're not ordering it. But I wish they would because I'm down to five and I want another bundle. <laughs> so it, it's a really great, inexpensive cigar. And like you said, I don't believe you can get them anymore. But if you ever see them and get your people, go out and buy it because you won't be disappointed. It's a really great, inexpensive stick. Well, I'm glad to hear that. And I'll be on the phone with them on Monday morning. So yeah. <laughs> telling them hey, what's going on. This yeah. Is um, now, well, is there any I, plans? Would you release that? as your own cigar or is that something that you can't do that you have to only release it for Thompson? Uh, well, I mean, we came out, we proposed that blend for them. They didn't come up out to us and say, make this, this, this is what we want, this wrapper, this binder, this filler. We proposed that idea to them and, and we came out with them as an exclusive when they said they wanted it, they were interested in it. Um, we could probably relaunch that cigar under another label. It wouldn't be the we wouldn't call it the white label just to avoid any any confusion or any problems. Right. Uh, Thompson, very yeah. nice people, and you know you don't want to you don't want to offend anybody or do anything that even gives the appearance of of doing something underhanded. So right. it would come out with it. it would be born under a new blend. You can call it the Stogie Four One One blend. Yeah, we call, there you it, go. call it the Mike's, That's all right. We don't the mind. Mike, the Mike uh, Mike Williams Red Sox blend. <laughs> Uh, not, not a big hit in New York, but it's so well, well, we'll call it that and then put the New York Yankees logo on it. <laughs> if it's the Red Sox blend, it's not a big hit period right now. So let's, 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 let's be honest. But uh, I would love to see it come back out, even in a limited release or something, because the price point is dead on and the flavors are, like I said, the only issue I can had with it consistently was a burn issue. But Beyond that, the flavors, I mean, people will be surprised by the flavors. And I, and I think that people just probably didn't buy it, Hank, because, you know, you, you look at a lower-end cigar price point-wise, and people mm -hmm. go, ah, how, how good can that be? And right. people need to really try cheap, inexpensive cigars because there's a ton out there with amazing, amazing flavors. And that one right there in my book is a hit. And I, I hope you come out with it again because, like I said, I got five left. That gives me five years, so come back out with it. Well, in, in fairness, though, I mean, we talk about the price point. That cigar today would be more expensive right. if for no other reason right. that was released before the S-chip. Right. right. So just, just the taxation alone, it would make it a more expensive cigar. Right. Um, thank your government for that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, let's not get into politics too much. We can um, do that. <laughs> oh, yeah? That's, that's fair game? Fair Absolutely. Game? Absolutely. Whatever you want to talk about, we're, we're happy to talk about it. So feel free. Go ahead. Uh, and maybe put that off for a little while. Um, you, you talk about people and their and their perceptions of a of a of a less expensive cigar, and and there's no cigar that really is is cheap. I mean, they cost a they cost a lot of money. 
I mean, if for a lot of guys, a three, four dollar cigar is is expensive. It's a lot of money. So I, I think our, our whole focus has been to to really produce cigars that can uh, really appeal to a wide range, not just of tastes and palates of the individual consumer, but a whole lot of different price ranges as well. And so that's kind of the idea behind that, that new line that I, I talked about, the, the premium Dominicano and the Habano and the Connecticut and, and in the natural wrappers. They're, they're nice price points. Um, they're dynamite, long filler cigars. Um, may not be to your palate, but, but they're good cigars. Um, and talk about people's perception of less expensive cigars. I remember this had to be around 2004, 2003, 2004. One of the very early blends we came out with was called the Oliveros Classic Collection. And that was a blend not terribly different than the one you're talking about on the white label, but it was it had a different binder. Um, but that cigar retailed, there were four sizes, retailed around between four and five dollars depending on the size. And I remember traveling with our uh, with our representative from Dallas down to San Antonio on that whole I-35 corridor, corridor, hitting every cigar shop with that line. And we had a couple of events lined up. That cigar was picked up by every account. And I've never had a, a, a trip like that where every store I walked into, bam, they took it. Wow. Um, and it was great. The events went great on that line. And I remember one guy in Texas at one of the events, and this, this blew my mind. The guy lights the cigar up and he's, he says, well, this is really a good cigar. What's the, uh, what's the price of this cigar? I said, well, why don't, why don't you smoke it a little bit more and uh, I'll tell you later. He works his way down a little bit, gets about halfway through. Okay, what's the price? Keep smoking it. I'm not telling you yet. <laughs> he gets down to, it's almost a nub. He goes, look, this is a great cigar. He goes, I, I want to know how much this is. I said, would you buy it? He says, yeah. I said, that's a four and a half dollar cigar. He goes, he puts it down. He said, I wouldn't buy that. <laughs> I said, why not? He goes, I don't smoke anything under $10. I said, okay, it's $10. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it makes you feel better. Yeah. You know, I, you don't smoke the label. I mean, nah. you smoke the cigar. And if it's a good cigar and you enjoy it, to me, the less expensive, the better. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I so... I, there's no there's no way to predict how certain people are going to react. You right. can you can predict for, in general, for how guys are going to perceive something. But man, you always get those outliers that just blow you away. And that and that guy. I mean, what could I say? Yeah. You know, just tell the guy to charge him ten bucks. Yeah. You made you, you doubled your profit. There you go. Here you go. Ten yeah, bucks. There he, you go. He wouldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I tried. Wow. Just, that's crazy. Just for you today, fifteen dollars a piece. <laughs> That's right. We normally sell them for twenty. <laughs> so I'm going to give you a break because you're sale. a nice guy. <laughs> then he'll probably say, "I don't buy anything on sale either." Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, that'll probably be his next thing. Hey, Hank, uh, let's go. Let's talk about bloggers. Do you check out any of the cigar blogger sites? And uh, what 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 do you think? Honestly, well, honestly, honestly, uh, I absolutely. Think, I think um, they're playing more and more of a role in our industry. Um, the, the whole technology thing, I mean, there's, uh, I'm not a young guy. So, I mean, when I, when I was growing up, computers were, you know, was, you didn't even think about them really. I mean, they were, you know, these big monstrous uh, things that were in a, somebody's laboratory or some scientist's office or, or whatever. And we didn't really pay a whole lot of attention to it. Um, I've tried the best I could to keep abreast of it, but, you know, I don't know these days that anybody, can, the, 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 the turnover and the technology is so rapid that I don't know any one person can, can possibly keep up on all this stuff. But, uh, but I think we've paid more and more attention to the bloggers, to uh, Facebook, to, to Twitter, um, all those things, and try to be as active as we can. We're a small company. Um, and so, even though a lot of those things are, are quote, free in terms of dollars and cents, um, there is a time investment, and it's, sometimes it's, it's tough. But I think there are, there are a few guys out there that are doing just a, a fantastic job. They're doing uh, honest reviews. They're not basing it on, on dollars that somebody's sticking in their pocket um, like you – well, I won't say that. But the, <laughs> <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I have to censor myself a little bit. Um, 
but uh, but I think that they're probably the most honest reviews that you're going to find. I mean, it's one guy; he's putting his face and his name to it, and and that's not something you find in in every uh, type of advertising medium. Let me let me say it that way. Um, so I, I think there's a, a, an increased interest in, in the retail consumers following the fellas that, that blog and women that blog, um, interested in what they say. And I, I think any manufacturer that doesn't pay attention to them is going to miss the boat. Um, we've, we've started actually, uh, really not for the retail consumer, but we've started, uh, again, trying to embrace the technology. I think we're the first cigar manufacturer to come out with a business to business website where, um, the retail con retailers, uh, can order online. Uh, from from that website and on there, um, I have a list of the the fellows that have put up reviews on any of our products, whether it's Swag or Aging Room or or the King Habano that we haven't even discussed here today, um, or our flavors. Um, so there's a there's a whole there's a whole list of those guys that are up there. What's that? What are you guys raising your hand for? I, I, because King we Havana. all did reviews. We did reviews. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I might did. I did. Yep. Yeah. Actually, let's speak. Let's well. Let's segue right into it. The King of Battle. Let's talk about it. King of Battle came out a few years ago. That's an all Nicaraguan uh, puro wrapper, filler, binder, and they're actually made for us down in Nicaragua by uh, Nestor Placencia, who, if any cigar you see on the on the shelf, if if Nestor didn't make it, he's probably got some tobacco that he sold to somebody that <laughs> made that cigar. He he has a lot of lot of tobacco. It's dynamite tobacco. Um, and I think Nestor is is uh, experienced enough and and uh, financed well enough uh, at this point um, that when Cuba opens up, I think he will probably have avenues and probably have access to Cuban tobacco. So that's probably one of the places you'll see it coming out of. And I don't know that for a fact. Nestor hasn't told me that, but just my own thinking. Um, but the, that cigar came out probably four years ago now, five maybe. Um, it's available right now in a Clara wrapper, which we're actually, it's going to undergo a little bit of a name change and, and probably a design change on the band and the box. Uh, we're working on those things right now. Um, it's going to be called, it's going to be the same cigar. Uh, it's going to be called the uh, King Havano Criollo, but it'll use the same wrapper. And I, I think sometimes the name just conveys different things about a cigar. Um, so we're really going to call it what it is instead of Claro. Uh, it's a Criollo wrapper. It truly is a Criollo wrapper. Um, in the Criollo, it's, uh, I would call it a medium bodied cigar, uh, really nice flavor. Like I said, old Dominican tobacco. So if you guys, if you have guys that are fans of old Nicaraguan cigars, man, that's a dynamite one to pick up medium body. Um, it's also available in the, uh, an Oscuro, which is a darker than the Criollo, uh, medium to full. Um, and we have the Maduro Fuerte, Fuerte, which is a triple fermented Nicaraguan Maduro wrapper. Uh, that's the fullest of the three wrappers. Um, right now, I do have inventory on all three of those wrappers and all four sizes. We're going to be gradually eliminating the Oscuro, the, the middle one. Um, we're going to stay with the two extremes, the Criollo medium and the Maduro Fuerte on the strong side. Um, there's not that much difference, number one, between the coloration of the three wrappers, right. in all truth. The, the, the triple, uh, the Maduro Fuerte is a dark wrapper, um, but the Oscuro kind of gets lost in between them, flavor-wise, presentation-wise. We're going to take that out eventually, um, and we'll just be left with the two wrappers. So we're, we're slimming down some of the offerings, some of the uh, facings that we will offer to the stores. It also comes in the King Havana line. We came out with a line extension a couple of years ago called the Black Knight. And it, it's also a, a Nicaraguan Puro, uh, but it's box pressed. It's got a different binder on it from the Maduro Fuerte. Also features a triple fermented Maduro wrapper, and it's a full bodied smoke. Two sizes, it's got a six by 52, it's got a six by 60 box pressed. Um, really nice smoke, full bodied, but smooth as glass. I'll be trying that one. <laughs> That's a dynamite smoke. And Matt, Matt just mentioned it in the uh, chat room, the uh, Black Knight, the box press. Yeah. Well, I hope he had good things to say about it. I didn't, I didn't see what he, what he posted. 
So uh, let's see. What else did we miss, Hank, that we didn't go over? You wanted to go over um, talking earlier. Um, oh, one thing I do. I have actually, Mike, you want to ask that question there, the uh, full body question, number 11? No, I was going to go different way. Sorry. Uh, All right, go ahead. Go <laughs> ahead. We'll wait. We'll come no, back. No rush. I wanted to ask now, from your standpoint, now I know you're going to have to probably be careful with wording on this, but brick and, <laughs> well, it, you know, brick and mortar stores and the big humongous online shops. Mm -hmm. Do you see, how do I word this? Do you see, anything, say do you, well, do you see anything that can be done to help the brick and mortars compare to say like a, you know, a company sells their cigars and this is the big problem I had, you know, with manufacturers saying they want to help brick and mortars. They'll sell to brick and mortars for a price, but then the big online conglomerates will buy, you know, millions of cigars at a time and get a huge discount compared to brick and mortar. Um, do right. you see anything else as a manufacturer that you could do to help brick and mortars? The the biggest thing that, that we can do, there, I think there's two things that, that we can do to help brick and mortar uh, folks. Uh, one is to it's difficult because I think this industry for a long time has been uh, taking a man at his word. And, and I think that uh, I like to live that way. And, and if I give you my word, my word is good. And you, you don't have any way to test that out but to take my word on something. But, but I, I stick to what I say. Um, that I, I'm, a, I'm afraid to say that in some instances that has changed a little bit. So I think it's it's incumbent on the manufacturers if they're going to come out with a line and they say they're going to price protect it with the online retailers um, that they get it in writing. Um, so if if you know if I if I do some kind of an agreement where I'm coming out with this new line and I'm I'm going to price protect it um, because I want the the brick and mortars who typically when you buy a box are going to discount at ten percent. Right. So if I can get the online retailers to agree to hold that discount at 10%, maybe even 15. Most times uh, the, the brick and mortar guys are okay even with 15 on the online guys because then you still got the shipping. You have to you exactly. know figure into that. Um, so you know if you can get that agreement, either if you're comfortable with that person face-to-face -face on a handshake or get it in writing if you have any doubts at all because in the end, you're not just protecting the brick and mortar guy. You're protect. You're protecting your 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 label, your brand, your mark. Um, so I I think you know it, it it behooves us to be able to do business. And and there's look, there's enough cigar smokers out there where we can all be successful. Right. All of meaning all of us manufacturers, all online, all brick and mortar. We can coexist. We can live together in the same world, and we can all do okay. We just have to be smart about how we do it. Now, I think from a, from a retail consumer, and I was a retail consumer of cigars long before I was in manufacturing or distribution, there's no substitute for being able to walk into a cigar shop, see the cigar, smell it before you buy it. The retailer might have a problem with you squeezing it and feeling it up, but, uh, you know, you can still do those things. Um, and you sit down and you smoke a cigar and, and, and you, you know, hopefully you purchase a box, but you've got a, you got flat screen TVs. You can watch the, the Red Sox lose to the Yankees. You can watch a college football or, or World Series game. Uh, you know, and that's something you can't do with the online guys. The online guys, you're going to get great deals. There's no doubt. Um, you know, they have the benefit of, of the of volume that they do right. and, the, and the price breaks that they can get based on that kind of volume. And, you know, that's, that's how it is. Um, but I, you know, I, I don't want to short sell on the, on the brick and mortar guys. They're, they're the backbone of the industry and they're what keeps, you know, guys going to the store. And, and the first question out of any guy's mouth when he walks into retail stores, Hey, what do you got that's new? Yeah. Um, so that really drives the market to come out consistently with new products. We launched three new lines at the IPCPO. We've already launched two line extensions on that on that value price Dominican that I told you about. So I mean, we're generating a lot of new stuff. We still, and we haven't really talked about them. Done our, our we still do our flavors, um, the Oliveros uh, flavors line, which are selling great. Um, flavored cigars are not for for everyone. Uh, some guys frown on them. Some guys, you know, maybe smoke them in the closet when nobody's looking because they enjoy it. You know. Uh, <laughs> 
but but there that's a dynamite cigar and i put our flavors up against any other manufacturer not to talk bad about any of my competition but they can't match what we do those are all long filler they're good tobacco it's not crappy tobacco with you know being masked by a flavor uh the process that we use is exclusive uh nobody makes them like we do and on our flavored cigars that flavor stays consistent from the time you light it up until the time it's a, a little tiny nub um, you get that flavor, whether it's chocolate or cognac. We've come out with some kind of drink mix flavors. We've got cognac, Irish cream, uh, Cuba mojito, uh, vodka cranberry, which let me tell you is my favorite. In, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm not, I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm not a big fan of flavored cigars. I smoke them because I need to. We need to maintain quality control and all those other things. But uh, that vodka cranberry, you can smoke it down like that. Do you get a buzz? No. Okay. <laughs> no just, no just hangover. <laughs> no. Um, you, you might be able, Mike, if you flavor something else with the vodka cranberry, you can get your buzz. <laughs> that's on you. That's not me. Okay. <laughs> well, let me ask you this. What are your thoughts on the crave today about everyone making a full-body, kick-ass cigar? What, what's your thoughts on it? Do you, do you see it as just a, a wave, or do you see it's it's a gonna something that's going to continue for a while? Well, I... I think two things. I think if you're looking at one individual consumer, um, their palate's going to graduate and it's going to change over time. Mm -hmm. And so that one consumer is going to get to a point where he wants to or she wants to try the strongest cigar, you know, and, and push the envelope. Let's see how strong they can make it. And you have kind of a series of guys whose palates are graduating like that. Yeah. So you're going to see from time to time, you're going to see a wave uh, I think, of guys that are, you know, I kind of refer to them as the chest thumpers, uh, guys that will walk into a store, you know, hey, I want the strongest cigar you can come up with, you know, and and that's fine. And there are cigars that can fill that, that request, fill that need. Um, but I think a lot of those guys, once they, once they smoke a few of those, or they may smoke it for six months, I don't know, but they're going to come to the realization that, you know what, it, a cigar, to really enjoy it, which is the bottom line to enjoy, mm -hmm. uh, doesn't have to be that, that overpowering uh, body, that, that, that kind of strength. You can get strength without harshness, without bitterness, and a fantastic flavor. Um, and I think a lot of guys, once they, once they hit that kind of crescendo of power, uh, kind of come back and, and go for something that's going to back off a little bit but deliver more on the flavor. Those are the guys that we're after. Uh, we don't make anything that's going to be for, you know, that chest thumping guy that wants a strong, none of them. If that's what you're after, you know, spend your money somewhere else. Don't get an Oliveros. It ain't going to be what you want. If you want something that you can kick back and enjoy either on the mild, the medium, or the full, that's going to be deliver a full flavor and a, just a great smoke, then give Oliveros a try. Cool. Now, uh, Matt asked a good question along with that one, and I actually had one to go with it, too. Um, he asked for that trend for the full-body killer smokes. Um, do you see that as an American market trend or as a worldwide trend? And with that, I know the sizes. I know uh, I, I hear a lot from overseas that here in the United States, everything is going bigger, bigger, bigger. And overseas, everything, they, they would rather smoke the smaller you know, the, the smaller ring gauges. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts on those? Yeah, I, I think on both of those things, the American market is very different than overseas market. Um, we do a, a pretty decent business out in Russia, of all places. Um, they don't like the real, real full body. They don't like the big, big ring gauges. Um, they do prefer smaller sizes. Um, I mean, they do have some sales in larger, larger sizes. Um, but for the most part, primarily, they're the smaller ring gauges, probably topping out around 50, 52. Um, start getting bigger ring gauge than that, they start backing off, sales fall off. Um, as far as strength, they're not looking for something overpowering, right. not like in, in the U.S. This is the USA, man. Bigger is better, you know? I mean, Supersize it. Yeah. Supersize yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we yeah. like. Look at the aging room at six and a half by sixty. That thing is a monster. I it's like an it. absolute monster. I, I liked it though. I really did. Yeah, 
and 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 that's fine. I mean, that, that's why we have four different sizes in that. But we've got something down as small as I think it was a four and a half by forty eight, um, the smallest size in that aging room line, and that's a dynamite cigar size. Um, you take in consideration the flavor that you get out of that is going to be even though it's the same tobacco. The flavor that is going to jump at that little four and a half by forty eight is going to be different than that six and a half by sixty. Oh yeah, it just is. Yeah. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah. Um, the same thing in the swag. We talked earlier about the Corona and the the Lancero. The flavor pops out of those sizes. And I I was one that I used to really enjoy larger ring gauge cigars when they when they really first started rolling out. Um, but I've gotten to the point where man, give me Corona anytime. Anytime. And when you think about the original process of blending a cigar, coming up with a new line, I mean, we can't blend based on a six and a half by 60. Right. We'd, we'd be smoking like all day long, Yeah. you, you know, which not necessarily a bad thing. But I mean, after a few, your, your palate's like, ah, you know, you're shot. You can't really appreciate the subtleties, especially when you're coming up with a new blend. So we roll uh, for the blending. We'll go with a smaller like Corona ring size, right. like 46, 48. Um, you can really get the, the true flavor. So when, when you're looking, when you're in a store, retail shop, and you're thinking, well, what was the original intent of, of the flavor of that line? Pull out a Corona. That's the original blender's intent. Well, Rich has got a question for you, uh, Hank. He wants to know, how long have you been aging the aging room? Well, the aging room was, uh, the tobacco had been aged for about five years uh, before one cigar was rolled. Um, we originally started production, uh, I mentioned it earlier in, in the, the interview, um, that that was originally tagged to be the swag line. Uh, but it turned out when we ran production numbers, uh, there wasn't enough of that tobacco. So the rolled cigars sat on the shelf for another full year before we came out with Aging Room. Um, the swag line was actually the number two blend uh, when we when we were blending for the swag line, and it's gotten 90s and 91 ratings, so we're not bad for a, for second place. Um, the the aging room is is really a new release; just came out in July. We've submitted some cigars for for ratings. Uh, I, the last I've seen, nothing's come out yet. Um, so, but I'm anticipating good ratings on a cigar. It's it's dynamite. All right. Well, I guess how about one more? And since we're at our time, and oh, I I do want to say we forgot all about this. I want to thank Rich from East Coast Cigars and George from Rodrigo Cigars for the sponsorship, so we can be ad free for everybody in UStream. Uh, they're oh. wonderful. They came through for us when we needed the funds and <laughs> and got us to go. Uh, ad free for you guys so just wanted to say give a shout out to them to say thanks and uh the last question uh matt uh, there's a couple still yeah actually there matt just asked another one now um he actually asked do you sell any products specifically for the european markets or are your products just distributed everywhere right now we don't have anything specifically for the european markets in uh, in the european market we are producing a cigar that used to be available on the, in, in our market here in the United States, um, but is not anymore. That was the uh, XL for Men. That's getting actually actually in Russia. Uh, we're still selling the XL for Men. That was a nice medium, medium full. Um, it was actually a nice double Maduro, had a Brazilian Maduro wrapper and a Connecticut broadleaf Maduro binder, and a three-country fill. Really a good cigar. And Matt, he's got another one for you. What quantity of the M356 did you make? There'll be enough uh, from what we're projecting to last through the middle of 2012. I think by the trade show in Orlando, uh, it'll have a new uh, new blend. Okay. Well, I actually got one more that I missed. I want to know, do you have a favorite size cigar? And if so, which one is it and why? Um, I'm kind of going between the Corona and the Lancero, just because the, the, the flavor profile on that side, on those two sizes, is just, for me, is just incredible. Um, I, I enjoy any cigar uh, from, from mild all the way up to, to pretty full. Um, but the most important thing for me, smoking and for blending, is the flavor the flavor profile that you get out of a cigar. And for me, the smaller ring gauges, whether that's a Corona or a Lancero, um, just that you can't, you can't match it. Yeah. All right. 
well, it looks like we uh, just went over our hour there, so it went by so fast, Hank, I'll tell you. It did. Plenty, plenty of time. We got two hours before the first pitch, Yankees-Red Sox. Oh, <laughs> no, I, I need time to go to get my tissues and everything out of the yard. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> it's going to take me a while to deal with that, uh, that <laughs> let me say. But, but Hank, I want to say absolute pleasure having you on the show. It, it, you were a great guest, uh, and uh, it was absolute pleasure getting to meet you. And uh, is there anything before we head off that we didn't cover that you want to cover? Because we can go over a little bit if we need to. Uh, no, I think that's that's pretty much it. Uh, just you know, any of the guys or, or ladies watching the, watching this today, uh, if your retailer doesn't carry our stuff, please ask them to get it in. We're a phone call away. Oh, we see here that Carrie Bischoff is on and says happy birthday. So it is your birthday, Hank. <laughs> it's my brother. It's, uh, tomorrow's my birthday, yeah. Well, happy birthday, yeah. man. We didn't even know that. See that? Look at that. Happy birthday. Hey, you got the Thanks family coming Appreciate on and it. supporting us. I like it. Look at that. Another year <laughs> Another year in the aging room, he says. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's my, that's my baby brother. Uh, he, looks, he looks older, but, uh, but I am actually older. Yeah. Uh, actually, Carrie's working with us now. He's, he's representing our product out in uh, Washington State and in uh, Oregon. Oh, nice. Great. Nice. Great. 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 Well, thanks, yeah. Carrie, for joining in the chat room. We appreciate you popping in. Yeah. Hopefully you'll stick around more with it. But, hey, we're going to let you go. I want to say thanks again, and I also will get that email out to you, what we discussed earlier. I appreciate that. And uh, you're welcome back anytime you want to come back. We appreciate it. And on your agent room, real quick, mm -hmm. you wanted us to smoke it and tell you what we thought. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I think the smaller – I'm a bigger ring gauge guy, but I think the smaller ring gauge in this cigar is where it's at. I, I, I enjoy the flavors, some citrus, lots of wood, some pepper, spice, really – Great cigar in a smaller ring gauge. I really enjoyed it. I want to thank you for sending it out to Excellent. us to enjoy. It was, it was very nice to you, and I definitely enjoyed it. What did you think, Mike? Yeah, I thought the smaller ring gauge did have a more potent uh, the more potent flavor to it, and it had more strength to it, I think, you know, uh, from me smoking. Mm -hmm. And for me, for, you know, I, I'm mild to medium usually for a cigar. I just love the big ring gauges. I mean, this, this Toro is really nice yeah i guess this was the toro size that i have here this was nice and i like that six and a half by 60 I, I i like to be able to sit down and smoke a cigar for two three heck give me one that'll last eight hours i'd i'd be in heaven you know <laughs> and uh, <laughs> you know and and just relax enjoy it watch a, a phillies game or uh or <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting it all around i tell you i can't win today <laughs> Let's end, it, yeah. end this damn show. We, <laughs> we're we're going to cut that out, Hank. All we're that gonna... <laughs> stuff will be cut out. There'll be splices. Actually, hey, we'll... no censorship, man. No censorship. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It'll show you putting up a Red Sox lighter. It'll be a Red Sox lighter. <laughs> but yeah, I did, I did but, enjoy but the yeah, line. Hank, I, I think it's going to do very well. I, I, I mean, I, I think it's yeah. people are going to enjoy this cigar, and it, it just has a nice – all the flavor – the flavors really meld together in it, I think. And it works out good. Yeah, yeah. Good. I appreciate that, fellas. We well, wish you nothing but uh, success, Frank. Hank, so much. So uh, we'll let you go. And uh, other than that, guys, uh, Hank, we'll talk to you soon. All right, man. Thanks right. a lot. Thanks for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Uh, nice thank meeting you, you Hank. for taking the time out of your Pleasure. See you. Thanks, Hank. See you. Bye-bye. All right, everybody. Well, that was Ooh. Hank from Oliveros. Uh, really good review. Mike Slacken, he didn't get back to the second part, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, anyways, about the five-pack giveaway, we are going to, when the post is up, we will have the winner picked on the five-pack from my humidor. Um, that will be on the post. We'll make sure that's on there, so check it out. We want to thank everybody for coming in to the chat room. What a great guest, man. I'll tell you, really down-to-earth guy, really great guest. I enjoyed it very much. So other than that, I got nothing else. It's great to be back. I'm down in the man cave trying to get that done. And uh, I want to thank everybody once again. I want to thank Matt and Mike once again for covering my ass while I was gone. And uh, other than that, I got nothing else to add. How about you? No, I think it's going good. I mean, even even though you were slacking there for so long, you came back and you, you did an okay job, I guess. I mean, we'll, we'll let it pass this time. Yeah. But uh... <laughs> I, I did the best I could. <laughs> 
our next show, our next show, what's our next show? I think it's September 14th, and we'll have Gary from Emilio Cigars, I believe. But we'll do a post up on that. But Gary from Emilio will be our next. There won't be a blogger show next month. We're going to do two manufacturer shows. So uh, right. hope everybody sticks in. Again, I want to thank uh, Rodrigo Cigars and East Coast Cigars for all of their sponsorship. We appreciate it very much here at Stogie 411. And uh, other than that, that's all I got. That's all I got. So, so, till the next time. Hopefully, we'll see you next time. We'll see you.